Welcome to the topic where we highlight Houston Community College, our students, our programs, and our reach into the community. I'm Todd Duplantis. Great to have you with us this Tuesday afternoon. We are usually live on Facebook and YouTube every Tuesday at 1 p.m. We have bit fluctuality in that uh, in the start time, but we're usually here every Tuesday. You can always catch us on HCC TV, catch the rebroadcast of the show, and look for us across social media as Houston Community College District. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and get notifications when we post brand new shows like these. We're going to talk about the supply chain. I know you've been to the store uh, lately, your favorite grocery, and maybe you notice the shelves are not all full, or maybe you're looking for that one item like I was the other day at the store and you couldn't find it. In fact, all the stores are out of it. We've seen in the news lately a lot of uh, stories about the supply chain issues. One could be the lack of qualified workers. But you have to get the products to the store shelves somehow, and HCC steps in that role by training the next generation of truck drivers. Martin Garcia joins us now. He's the Director of Transportation Training, and he joins us now to talk about our innovative truck driving program. Martin, always good to see you. Good to see you, Todd. Now, let me ask you this. Uh, let's talk about the program itself. We're going to talk about the supply chain issues later on in the show, but let's talk about your program. I think the last time I was out there, you guys had some pretty cool simulation uh, areas where it looked like almost like a video game where you could drive a semi in the simulation. Has those uh, operations expanded along with, we know the, the students get behind the wheel of an 18-wheeler at one point, but are you increasing the simulation as well? We, we use simulation as much as we can, and uh, we use it. Uh, a simulator runs usually eight to 10 hours a day, uh, five and sometimes six days a week. Uh, gives a student an excellent opportunity to uh, see how the big rig works um, in a very safe, closed environment. And uh, it, it offers the opportunity. We can actually program it to simulate uh, mountains, uh, extreme driving, such as uh, wet weather and different things like that. So we're able to put the students in some situations uh, very safely that we we won't get to do out on the street. So it, it's a huge uh, learning tool for us. And um, we have three complete simulation units right. currently in use. I know a lot of times when students are looking to get into, particularly into truck driving, it's a situation where, you know, I want to go out and I want to start making money as soon as possible. I want to get the right training. I want to get it fairly quickly. Have Let's talk about the programs you offer. Do you offer levels of certifications and can the students get out there rather quickly and start actually earning while they're learning? Yes, Todd, you know, our, our what I'll call our core program is a six week program. It's uh, 50 hours a week. Uh, it's fast. It's furious. Uh, it covers a lot of material, but uh, the students, and we have a high completion rate, um, uh, well over 90%. And then so in six weeks, a person goes, uh, they get their permit first. Um, then they go and they, we do two weeks of classroom, two weeks of road and range, um, two weeks of, uh, I'm sorry, range, and then two weeks of road. So it's a total of six weeks. Now, if you do even classes, our weekend classes, which we gear toward the people who are currently working, uh, we're able to do that in a 12-week program. And a person then goes out and immediately goes to start earning money. Some companies have orientation, different things, but they become an employer uh, quickly. We also do a lot of training for different companies, and those are different um, types of training or, or different time length of training, but this specific to companies. But to our open enrollment, six weeks and 12 weeks. And you mentioned companies hiring these students. Are you getting a lot of calls? We hear about truck driver shortage. Are you getting lots of calls right now from companies you, you haven't dealt with before saying, hey, can you help us out? Absolutely. Um, not a day goes by that we don't get several phone calls from, from companies that are trying to hire locally here, uh, be it a small company, a uh, large company. Uh, the amount of recruiters out in the field is larger than I've ever seen it uh, looking for drivers. Are your students one that, how does it work with the cab itself? I know a lot of people own their own cabs that, that they can go out in and, and the loads are leased, but how does that work with students starting out? Do they buy their own cab? Do they work for a company that comes with all the, the equipment you need to start running? They just get behind the wheel. How does that work? 
we encourage our students to go to work for a company that has a good training program. Uh, the, the person that leaves our program has a lot of knowledge and they have a license in their hand, but there's still a long ways from being that uh, professional truck driver. And so we encourage them to go to work for a company that has a training program that continues with them. Uh, most of those programs are about four to six weeks where they drive with a mentor or uh, overseen closely by a mentor and they go into the, the work, uh, you know, into the occupation that way. Um, there's a few people who do the owner operator, but there's so much to learn. And we use the term, um, learn on somebody else's rig. Yeah. Okay? Before you invest that money, um, the price of trucks is just like cars. They're three times what they were uh, 18 months ago. A $35,000 used truck is now $95,000. Uh, so it's the supply and demand, even for equipment, is just outrageous. Uh, so those are, you know, those are some of the things. So we we don't recommend that. Uh, go out, uh, and there's plenty of opportunities for a person to go out and then make that decision. Maybe you don't want that total responsibility of the insurance, uh, finding your own load, and just the list goes on, the maintenance of your truck. Um, if you own one truck and it's down, you make zero. If you work right. for a company and your truck's down, normally they have other trucks. So, um, you know, maybe the ultimate goal is for people to be an owner operator. So they have that small business and that's great. And, uh, you know, the fortunate thing is, Todd, I've been here a long time and I've got to see a lot of students come by back that's worked for a company for a long time and built up a great retirement. Others who have owned, now they own several trucks themselves or they just own that one truck and they're happy to, go out and do what they want to do on their own time and, and, uh, and make a living that way. When, uh, when the pandemic first started, I had a chance to speak with a long haul truck driver um, as part of this show to talk about the, the problems they were facing, getting the goods to market. And one of the things he told me is he was working, I believe it was for Toby Keith or the Zach Brown, it was the Zach Brown band um, when the pandemic hit. And he worked for a company that was trucking equipment across the nation for Zach Brown. Well, of course the pandemic hit, all concerts were canceled indefinitely and his company pivoted him to start he was hauling coffee when I got a hold of him. Are you finding now that companies, because there's a shortage on goods, that companies are pivoting their operations to pick up the loads that are needing to get delivered um, when, you know, people may not need car parts as much because car, you know, there's a car, car shortage as opposed to maybe, uh, you know, grocery items. Absolutely. Um, you know, with the, obviously the internet and, and the uh, accessibility of people to find loads and, and that type of stuff and, and the, all the logistics out there uh, to make better use because typically a person doesn't make any or the company doesn't make any money unless they have a load in there. So they're wanting to haul uh, what they can uh, and not you know, run empty, um, no backhaul, have a backhaul, so to speak. Uh, so you're coming back to your terminal with a load. And a lot of people, because the grocery, uh, the food industry has really ramped up uh, because of COVID, more people stay at home, buy more groceries, that type of stuff. You found a lot of people who have uh, started hauling groceries that typically did not haul that as their primary commodity before that. Um, restaurants, you know, they they require groceries, but those were shut down for a while. So those, those drivers had to pivot into other things. And so... Um, yeah, there's a lot of that going on. You, you find very few trucks that are sitting still because there's loads out there. Yep. Martin, I want to talk with you more later in the show about the supply chain issues, your thoughts on that. And I also want to talk about autonomous driving trucks, because I know that's a big thing popping up and I know you guys are addressing it. So let's uh, stick around. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll be talking about logistics in that program here at HCC. The topic returns in 60 seconds. Sometimes what you need just shows up. Houston Community College has your back. Whether you're knocking out some basics or up in your game for a better job, enroll today for spring classes and frame your future with HCC. For more than a year, we have kept you informed with more than 500 remote episodes. But now we're back, bigger and better, with more news and more guests. Join us live every weekday at 10 a.m. on Facebook and YouTube. 
and on HCC TV at noon and 5 p.m. You can watch from anywhere. We go where you go. Welcome back to The Topic. I'm Todd Duplantis. We're live every Tuesday afternoon at 1 p.m. right here on Facebook and YouTube. You can always catch the rebroadcast of our show on HCC TV and look for us in social media as Houston Community College District. Especially look for us on YouTube. You can subscribe to our channel and get notifications whenever we post new shows like this one. By the way, if you're into audio podcasts, Get this, you can download the audio versions of all of our content here at HCC TV as a podcast downloaded at hccs.edu slash podcast. We are talking about the supply chain here in the country. I know we've got issues. We're going to talk about that later on. But first, did you know HCC has a logistics program? That's right. We are training the next generation of workers who will handle getting the products to your shelves and getting them in our ports. We're joined now by Professor James Jean Batiste. He is the Divisional Chair of Logistics and International Business Center of Excellence at HCC. James, it's good to see you. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Let's start with your program, the logistics program. We had you on up to the minute, uh, I believe a few weeks ago, yes. and we talked briefly about this, but maybe you can tell us what can the students learn in logistics? Are there different levels of certifications and can they transfer this to a four-year degree? Well, they have several options available to them from that standpoint based on our curriculum. It starts there. Primarily, we have design uh, our curriculum to meet the needs of the marketplace today for temporary help, for, uh, for even students who desire to immediately qualify for a possible entry-level position. Our curriculum is designed for level one certificate where for 21 hours of courses, they can have a certificate recognized in the marketplace, manufacturing still standard council certification. Also, in addition to that, our curriculum also provides for a two-year degree program, which will provide them with the options of becoming a manager, or entry-level manager at forty dollars to $50,000 a year or more, depending on the industry that it's related right. to. And we also have the transfer portal by which they can continue on to a four-year degree also. And let me ask you this, because I was talking to Martin earlier and, and we were talking about the truck driving program and he's saying he's getting calls from companies all the time looking for trained students. Do you get those calls as well? I know you have an advisory board that you work with, but uh, do you get calls from employers that are looking to hire our students because there's a shortage of workers? Absolutely. What we have done also is channel that through our career services due to the fact of validating those requests too from the employers and structuring so that our students can be assured that they talk to the right people, go to the correct address, what the details of the job is. So we uh, provide that added benefit to the students, helping them to, to understand what company they're working for or where the position is, the address, how to dress for that particular appointment, the whole bit. So we have a very well uh suited program to help our students prepare for interviews, company questions and backgrounds, the whole bit. So we we call our program a triage. We take a right. student with no understanding of the marketplace. We have a curriculum that gives them fundamental understandings of industry, business, the whole bit. And we have a complete package when our students are interfacing with employees for the first time. Do you find also as well, a lot of people during this pandemic may have lost their job or may have had their hours cut. Maybe they're un they're underemployed right now, just can't get enough hours in their chosen profession. Maybe they're in their late 30s, early 40s, or, or even beyond. They have some managerial experience in another industry. Is that something that could translate into coming to HCC, getting a few certifications, and then using their experience to get into this field? Surprisingly, most of our students are coming from other industries, other backgrounds. 
And one of the areas we have is that our career service in conjunction with our, our program will interview all our students. They're required initially upon enrolling to contact our career center, which gives them the opportunity to put their resume in place, help them develop a resume, and share the, with them information in terms of what the industry requires, the different varied interests of logistics, shipping, receiving, material handling. So they have an idea prior to enrolling what direction they want to take. And this is very important for our students today because our curriculum is so specifically designed according to the choices that they make. Being that we have the Port of Houston here, one of the major ports in this country, um, does that help with your students finding jobs? Uh, would some of them go work directly for companies associated with the port? Well, the Port of Houston is a, ma a major industry driver across the board with our economy in Houston and uh, from that vantage point. So as uh, alluded to by Martin, trucking, clerks, material handling, all of dispatching, all of those positions are generated by the Port of Houston to a great degree. So it's a great uh, economy contributor in terms of uh, jobs and employment. And speaking of employment, do your students get a chance for on-the-job training while they're still attending classes where they could go and maybe earn some money working for an employer while they're going to school? We have the internships. We have job shadowing. Uh, that work with our curriculum, the design and embedded in our curriculum for our students as a part of their uh, degree program. Having the big companies like Amazon and Walmart, you know, all the major grocery retailers, um, has that enhanced, obviously enhanced your industry and the way that you're working with students? Have they affected your curriculum? Very much so, because the industry is changing. What we saw, for example, in the grocery industry, a cashier two years ago only waited at the check stand for you to put your groceries on the uh, at the checkout right. and they receive your money. Now, a cashier is now aware of what products, identifying products throughout the store, pulling products. They're dealing with customer relationship, telephone the customer, say your order is ready. So there's been a tremendous change from that standpoint of job descriptions in the industry across the breadth. And Amazon itself, um, I, do you see any sign of them slowing down or getting a major competitor that's going to uh, eat into some of their business? They just seem to be a behemoth right now. They're at the forefront. And as such, uh, they are excelling at a rate based on their understanding of the economy, based on their understanding of logistics. Very few companies have the breadth of understanding and expertise that Amazon has. You can attribute this primarily to their understanding of the marketplace and logistics and the need of the consumer. Uh, very few, few com companies are at that level to, to experience what Amazon is experiencing day in and day out. Do we have programs that go directly into training Amazon employees? Oh yes, matter of fact, we're in Amazon's locations training their employees. Wow. So that gives you an idea of the impact. Incredible. So we've been talking about the supply chain issues. We were just talking with uh, uh, James Batiste. When we come back, Martin Garcia is going to join us once again. We're going to talk about what's going on with the supply chain in this country. All right. Going to have your answers coming up in a few. Stick around. The topic returns in 60 seconds. Sometimes what you need just shows up. Houston Community College has your back. Whether you're knocking out some basics or up in your game for a better job, enroll today for spring classes and frame your future with HCC. When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. <sighs> but now I get to search for life in the universe. And who knows, maybe life is looking for us too. So we're like aliens to them? Yeah. Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I oh, do. Easy. Awesome. We need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens. Things could be stranger, but I don't know how. I'm going 
through changes, through all of the strangeness, I'm going through changes now. Welcome back to the topic on HCC TV. But this afternoon, we're live on Facebook and YouTube. Thanks for joining us. You can find us across social media as Houston Community College District. Watch the rebroadcast of our shows on HCC TV. And make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel at Houston Community College District. Today, we're talking about supply chain issues, how HCC is training workers to address those, the next generation of truck drivers and logistics workers. We're joined this afternoon by Professor Professor James Batiste, the Divisional Chair of Logistics and International Business Center of Excellence, and also Martin Garcy, the Director of Transportation Training at HCC's Northeast College. Gentlemen, thanks for being back here on the show. Um, let's start with one question. I'm going to give both of you a chance to respond. We were talking at the top of the show. I mentioned about going to your favorite grocery. You're looking for that one item. The shelves are kind of empty. You can't find that item anywhere. Nobody's got it. You hear from some that, well, it's all California's fault. You hear it's the port's fault. You hear, well, we don't have enough trained people to drive the trucks. What's going on? Why are we having these issues? I'll start, James, with you, and then I'll give Martin a chance to answer. James? Well, as, as an example, uh, peanut butter. You need a jar. You need a lid. And you also need the peanut butter. You also need a truck to deliver it. Uh, you need a manufacturing process to manufacture it and put it all together. So each of those integrated parts of that jar of peanut butter has in itself a logistic system in place. So any area that is short, delayed, will bring up unbalance to the marketplace where there is a shortage at the consumer level. So... That's my contribution. If you understand that, then it, it you can see how the marketplace is where it's at today. Logistics is the root of the problem. We hear, though, and maybe you correct me on this, but I hear, James, that there's a lot of when in the ports are one issue in the port of Houston, we can get the ships in there. But you hear there are lots of ships just out at sea waiting to get into a port. They've already got the products assembled and made on the ship. What's going on there? Well, you only have so much docking stations. <laughs> Even if you have 100 ships waiting off, off, offshore and your docking can only handle 20 per day, do the math. Yeah. So five days, normally for a normal container ship, it takes about 36 hours to unload it in addition to that. Right. So... You have certain docking stations, you're limited there, you don't have a hundred, so it's magnifying itself from that standpoint. And Martin, I wanna bring you into the conversation. Um, from a drive truck driver standpoint, do we have a situation where truck drivers are, are retiring? Are they getting burned out? What's the reason for the shortage of truck drivers that we're hearing about right now? Well, it's it's several things, but you, you brought up retirement. Um, we know that a lot of people that uh, during the pandemic, when they decided that they couldn't go out or didn't want to go out, they decided to retire. And, uh, you know, stop and think about it. Uh, restaurants were closed, uh, so people couldn't go in, uh, truck drivers couldn't go in and eat. Yeah, uh, yeah. So many things, so many services were non-existent. So if you were a truck driver who was kind of on the edge of maybe thinking about retiring, that probably put you over the edge, right? right. So you, you didn't, you know, you weren't used to the same thing. Um, you know, now we, we're, the trucking companies are experiencing the same issues as automobiles. There's not enough trucks, you know, um, they can't buy new trucks. The price of used trucks are very expensive. So there's just, uh, and one, one thing to add to James, uh, you know, it's the same thing applies to trucks. There's only so many trucks that can get in the port and bring things out. So whatever that number is, if it's, uh, you know, in, in Houston, I think it's about 2,000 a day in and out. And so if there's a need for 4,000, that just doesn't work. Um, so, and there's, you know, the the, the pandemic caused uh, things to back up in, in pretty much every area. 
And James, I want to ask you your thoughts on when things are getting better. You know, from somebody who's lived in in Houston most of my life, going through many hurricanes, one thing I've noticed is when the hurricane's coming, the grocery store runs out of everything, the gas stations run out of gas, and it takes us about a week or so to get back to life as normal, where you can go get your bread and fill up your car and you don't have to sit in a line. Um, are, how long is it going to take for us to recover from this pandemic? Are we looking at another year, maybe early 2023? What's your thoughts on that? It's going to be a minimum of a year due to where we were before. We had a system where the lead time was two or three days for materials that met that you had backup stock the whole bit. We're completely empty as a, from a standpoint of our supply chain. And uh, for many reasons, parts, labor, uh, material, transportation issues, the whole bit. So we're looking at minimum of a year uh, before we're back to normal. Martin, I want to ask you this. I know we talked about the truck driver shortage. Um, Two things that maybe we look for in the future. Number one, there's a pilot program to train 18-year-olds to get out there and start driving these trucks. Will that help? And how are we doing with the autonomous drivers? I mean, that's going to be affecting your industry as well. Do you think those things are actually going to help the truck driver shortage as we move into the next couple of years? Absolutely, they will. However, uh, you know, looking at the the 18-year-old, it's a pilot program. Um, it's it's 3,000 students or 3,000 young people to go into that program, and then Federal Motor Carrier will will make the decision whether to make it a final rule to where people can go for and, and it affects the interstate. So you know we always say you can drive from Orange, Texas to El Paso, which is about 900 miles if you're 18 years old, but you can't drive from uh, Orange to uh, Lake Charles, which is about 20 miles. So um, that's that's a rule that some people think is antiquated. Yeah. And other people, you know, have have uh, reasons why they don't. So that's one of the things. And so as we see, but the, the idea of being able to attract and keep that younger driver, I think, is key to our future. Um, and then let's talk about the autonomous trucks. The autonomous truck, uh, I think, for many years will have a, a person in the truck or controlling the truck or overseeing the truck. And... Uh, most people in the industry feel like that will help attract a younger person because it will be um, it will be easier maybe, but it'll be more in line with what they like. It'll be working with the computer, being able to have a lot more technology on board. And the truck itself has so much more technology than it did just a few years ago. The automatic braking, the auto- adaptive cruise control, anti-rollover, just so many things are coming out. Technology is increasing greatly in the truck. And as they go toward the autonomous, they have to increase those safety factors. Um, and so it's it's going to be a huge benefit in the safety factor and also in the ease of the job and where a person can be more rested uh, when they get to that end of the line. So there's a lot of different options there. And uh, it's all positive, but is it right. a fix for next week? Not in the next year, maybe not in the next three to five years, but it's a move in the right direction. James, real quickly, I've got about 30 seconds. Gas prices going up, going to continue to go up. How is this going to affect our supply chain? Well, I put it this way. Pray for Russia and the Crimea. (laughs) If Russia uh, invades, then the price of all gas, everything is going to go up uh, at least 5 to 10% more. And it's not going to it's not going to uh, change anytime soon, gentlemen. We appreciate you both joining us and talking about this very important issue to us all. It's good to see we're doing some great work with HCC. Thanks for joining us here on the topic. I'm Todd Duplantis. We'll see you next week. Okay.